All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. My name is Devin Ward. I'm currently a product manager with the retail products and experience space at Disney Parks, which I'll definitely be getting into more details later what that actually means. But today we're going to talk about finding your voice in product. Now we're focusing on product management, but I wouldn't be surprised if after this presentation, you feel inspired and kind of take bits and pieces of this to also apply to your everyday life. Um, so please interpret and take this presentation however you need for you today, however you need to interpret it, however you want to take, however much you want to take, feel free to do whatever is best for you. So throughout this presentation, you will see multiple Disney references. Um, I couldn't give a presentation without giving some sort of Disney reference here and there, but hopefully you've seen some of these classic movies. If not, I always encourage you to have a Disney weekend marathon. I promise as an adult, there are multiple ways for us to kind of interpret these the older we get and these classic stories um, and how they relate to your life today. So a perfect example here is you see Ariel um, <laughs> gaining her voice back after Ursula takes it from her. Uh, sometimes we all like we all have an Ursula in our life, whether it's an employer, a friend, a boss, a coworker, maybe even a family member that kind of takes away our spark. But the human voice, in my opinion, is the most powerful sound in the world. It's how we communicate our wants and needs. And growing up, I was always taught to use your voice, even if it shakes. And that's truly the motto I live by today. So you have a power to shape your image, but you find and embrace the voice that is completely yours. So today, I'm using my voice as Devin Ward and showing up as my authentic self. Um, and just to note, these views and opinions are solely my own. So let's get started. Like I said, we're going to have a nice little introduction. I'm going to tell you where I come from, my experience at Disney. I'm going to talk about what is product management, so how I define it um, and kind of how we define it as Disney, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Then we're going to talk about soft skills versus hard skills, and in my opinion, what takes you from a good to a great product manager. And within those brackets, I kind of broke it up in three different categories. So the ability to influence without authority, uh, passion is contagious, which hopefully you'll be able to hear throughout this entire presentation, and then how to show up as your authentic self. All right, so getting started a little bit about me. As you can see here from this timeline, my career started at Disney and has remained there for the last several years. I, I truly love sharing the story because I think it's a testament to if you believe it, you can achieve it. Uh, I truly started from the bottom. Uh, minimum wage, pressing start on the ride at Star Tours, graduated from the University of Minnesota and followed my Disney dream to come down here and do the Disney College program. Um, from that point in time, what I learned early on is that it's all about your networking web. As you can see, I've bounced around in a couple different roles here at Disney and Disney is huge, um, obviously from all the different departments that there are. And each position I kind of got as I networked or, you know, met with someone that knew someone, but I always kind of knew where my passion and where I wanted to be. And that really truly transpired from a digital perspective and a food and beverage perspective. So I really want to talk about my passion for food and beverage and where that came from first. And that will definitely flow into some of the passion is contagious section of the presentation. Um, but as many of you know, Disney Parks uh, makes up all of our international parks, Walt Disney World, Disneyland. Um, and from a high level, we really call ourselves the retail and experiences team. But as you can see here, as a product manager, I've worked on things like mobile check-in, table service to go, mobile order walk-up list, and dining reservation. So what we're doing is we're really optimizing and digitizing the food and beverage experience for our guests at our parks. Uh, if you have not been to our parks, you can also think of mobile ordering like your Chipotle, your Chick-fil-A. You're able to place an order ahead of time and pick it up and pay for it. And then all you have to do is show up from a self-service standpoint and your order is ready for you. We have that at our Disney parks. Um, and the same thing with that mobile check-in and walk-up list. A lot of restaurants have adapted the self-service where you don't even have to speak to a cast member is what we call kind of our employees at Disney. Uh, you can just check right in for your reservation and then as soon as your table is ready, you'll be escorted right to your table without ever having to interact with a cast member. So again, going off of kind of where my passion for food and beverage started, well, 
for starters, who doesn't love food? Um, food is life. <laughs> and I'm a true foodie at heart. But I think the story that I always love to tell is the day that I turned 16 and the day that I could legally work, I was literally knocking on Outback Steakhouse's door where my brother worked. So again, had a connection. Um, and I said, I want to work here. I want to work in a restaurant. I want to start my, my job hunt and my career. Uh, and from there, I was a hostess. So we're standing up at the host stand and at all times you were writing down the table numbers, how you put people, where they go, how they, where they get seated. And in my head, I always thought, why are we doing this manually? Like technology exists. There's these iPads that are coming to life. Like computers are coming more popular. Again, this is over a decade ago now. So I think things have changed a lot since then. But as the 16 year old, I'm thinking, what the heck can we do with this technology that we have today and something that seems like such a manual process. So at 16, I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going in my life. Um, I'm then just trying to get accepted into college and figure out what a career actually means. So in college, everyone wanted to be kind of a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse. And multiple times I said out loud, I just want to bring products to life. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that entails. I don't know what job that even is. Um, not knowing that product management where I am today is exactly what that transpired to be. So little did I know at 16, my thoughts and passion for food and beverage and the digital space and bringing products to life would bring me to where I am today. So again, as I mentioned, we're going to kind of just level set and talk about what is product management? Obviously, you can Google the term. There's a lot of different things that'll come up, but this is how I have summed it up in my in my words and kind of how it makes the most sense today. So product management is the practice of strategically driving the development, market launch, and continue to support and improvement of a company's products. Um, I kind of like this little Mickey symbol here uh, that shows we're the kind of the intersection between the business, which could be made up of operations, legal, industrial engineering, anything from that business side, your line of business partners, design, which would be user experience and user interface, and then technology where we would fit in, which would include your developers, your engineers, your product, project, um, a bunch of different layers that would fit in from that technology standpoint. Um, and this is a pretty common theme that you'll see if you simply Google what is product management, right? Now to expand on that, at Disney, I think the biggest thing that kind of sets us apart is in that intersection of the business technology and design, we have the guest. The guest is our priority. And as you can see, my face right in the middle of all of it. Um, at Disney Parks, the guest and the guest experience is at the center of almost every decision and value driver that we make today. Um, and that's just how I view it, which that can translate in many companies to the customer or client, potentially in startups. But the guest is so important at Disney. I can almost say that there is not many decisions that I've made as a product manager that haven't in some way, shape or form kept the guest at the core of the why. Um, Another thing that I found pretty creative and fun is <laughs> you'll see a bunch of these different kind of uh, descriptions centering this infograph that it, you're not just this intersection between the business technology design and the guests, but you actually wear multiple hats. Uh, and if you're a product manager, you may laugh at some of these because they're insanely accurate. Um, that's what I caught myself doing. But <laughs> if you're not in product management and you're here just to kind of learn about it, um, and how we do it today, I'll kind of explain a few to help make a little more sense, like why in the world would we put firefighter as a product manager? So my best story of this one is a lot of times if I have a super busy day and I'm dealing with something where the iPads go down in the parks or our vendor is having an issue, I like to say I'm putting out a fire to my either coworkers, even sometimes my family, and they take it literally. They don't really understand like, why are you putting out a fire? And so we live in the digital world, right? We can't control everything. We're always working against a roadmap at Disney that's much bigger than our just little piece of pie. We're working against Apple and Android and AWS and vendors and dependencies. Um, and as a firefighter, you really have to have the discipline and knowledge to know how to keep that chaos at bay. Um, and again, how to kind of, you know, 
let the fire simmer, help make decisions. And this next one I really like too, because I grew up going to an arts high school. And so art always kind of lives uh, inside me. But as a conductor, to build a great product team, we must get, come together in harmony, right? And as an inventor, we're constantly finding ways to be innovative and inspire creativity across our products for our guests. Um, these just make me laugh. A quarterback, we're a butcher because we're constantly chopping scope at some points um, or scope creep. We're chopping to make sure that we meet our deadlines or a pastor or a diplomat. Uh, again, the, they're just really good ways to kind of help reiterate that as a product manager on paper, that we defined what we are, but we wear so many different hats than just being that middle person across all of those different segments. Now, one more thing to kind of level set, I really liked this infograph that uh, I found from Product Plan that talks about the circles method. And I think it does a really good job at kind of reiterating the cycle of product management. So it talks about the product life cycle and then myself being at Disney, I'm gonna kind of add to how this, this works out. So we really are identifying the business problem, right? And that could be something as simple as we are just changing a small feature in the mobile app and it's a simple feature that comes from our backlog or it could take two sprints or it could take a whole four years of development and project work. Um, but a perfect example would be the global pandemic hits and how are we going to reopen our parks safely? So what we have to do is we really have to, you know, get our core team together, brainstorm the solutions while identifying the customer, which is usually the guest. Um, sometimes you could be on another team where the cast are your guest or your client. So the cast services team. Um, and then we define feasibility, project valuation. And I think one of the big components that kind of set Disney product managers apart too from other companies, or at least just what I've observed, is that a lot of time in our field, we are estimating and determining the overall cost of a project and the value and the feasibility of it nine times out of 10 before we get approval or a green light for a project, right? Um, once we have that green light and we are approved and we did the value proposition, then the business and development starts. We go through quality assurance um, or QA, GQE, and then there's the go to market, which is definitely one of my favorite things because you're working kind of now with a different pod of um, cross-functional teams that focus on the marketing side of it. This is the kind of what I call the fun side. Uh, and you're organizing your feature launch and marketing and working with public affairs or what we're going to say on the website or how we're going to market this to our guests or are we going to use email or push notifications. Um, so again, a whole nother world that you're working with and being that quarterback of that team. And then you're refining the process. So it continues to be a cycle over and over again. It may not stop. As soon as you finish the project, you never know when you're going to come back to that and scale it to be something else. So um, again, that's kind of just what that method looks looks like. So I did mention the pandemic. Um, I think this is just one thing I wanted to touch on because I received kind of prior to this WebEx a, a good amount of excitement around how do you reopen a theme park in a pandemic. Um, and a, a get, never in a million years did I think that that would be something I could put on my resume, right? Like how to open a theme park after a global pandemic hits. Uh, and it wasn't easy, let me tell you. People always tell you as a product manager, you live in an ambiguous space. You always have to be flexible and willing to change and pivot scope on the drop of a dime. But a pandemic is much different than that. I think it changed all of our lives truly like inside and outside of work. And the two big themes that I saw come from this pandemic, uh, and especially at Disney too, even across other companies was the digital transformation and the self-service. So as you can see here, these are kind of just the core things and the core values that we had as we reopened. Um, and I think it's interesting to call out that prior to the pandemic, we always had self-service on our roadmap. That's where the future, that's where the evolution of technology is going. And it would be on our roadmap for five years, let's say three to five years. So you have to think that we have all of these ideas that we're going to implement over the next few years, all of a sudden the global pandemic hits and we have seven months to get it out the door, right? And you're living in a world of limbo where we may or may not open in seven months. Like you got to hit this date, but the reality is we may not actually be opening that date. So we saw a lot of challenges that we had to face, um, like condensing the timeline, 
condensing deliverables, half of our resources and half the team. And we just had to shift. We had to shift rapidly and being transparent. It wasn't always magical. Um, for weeks we lived in limbo and some days I feel like we still are, um, cause the pandemic is clearly not over, but as a product team at Disney, we had to do it for our guests. Um, and you'll see some other core objectives here when we opened, uh, like the cleanliness, the contactless payment, the cash training. It wasn't just digital transformation and self-service. Um, there was the safety part of it, just ways that we had to adapt to actually be able to reopen in Florida. Uh, but what the last year has taught me the most is that you you really never know what the next day is going to bring or what project is going to come your way. And having hard skills are super important as a product manager, right? You should probably be a scrum master. You should understand technology. You should understand how to read data and tell a story through analytics. Um, but the importance of the pandemic, I think the biggest thing that changed is that soft skills helped me thrive over the last year. Um, if I didn't have empathy, if I didn't have passion, or if I wasn't able to influence or bring my authentic self to work every day, even if it's remote, um, I don't think our teams could have or would have accomplished as much as we did. So that'll transition into my next slide. So we touched on the pandemic and kind of how we shift, shifted the way that we worked and how it impacted who we are today. And as product leaders, we really begin to ad adapt successfully to the new realities of what the world looks like post pandemic. Um, we undergone a huge stressor and we're trying to still recover from that, right? And I think it's because as an employer and consumer, our core wants and needs have been shaken. Um, or in Disney terms, the cast member and the guest, what we want and we need has has shifted. And I don't think it's going to be shifting back anytime soon. So I've summarized what I see as the shift in three different things. Number one is identity. Uh, we're all wearing masks, figuratively, hopefully for safety and metaphorically. So we wear them out for our safety and we are still wearing them in a way behind our Zoom screens because we're too afraid to, to, to not fit the mold of what we think everyone else wants or needs around us, right? We're just trying to be the best for our company. We're trying to bring our best foot forward, but sometimes we lose our authentic self in that process because we're being someone that someone else wants us to be. Time, another big thing. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Uh, the pandemic, again, huge stress on all of us. And I think reminded us that we're not promised tomorrow. And our candles are starting to fizzle, right? Like, this is the best description from Be Our Guest here. Like, the clock's running out of time and the candle's exhausted. So 2020 was a year of resilience. And, we, you know, we're really waiting for this pandemic to be over. But we're waiting for the next direction, whether it's from the government, whether it's from our family, whether it's from our significant others on what we should do next. And the pandemic's here to stay. And so that's how we've had to adapt. So instead of burning out our flame, uh, we need to find ways to reignite that spark and truly make lemonade out of lemons. And lastly, passion. If you've not seen Soul, it's a Pixar movie on Disney Plus I highly recommend because we all have something that makes us unique and we don't want to be a lost soul in this world. And you'd understand that if you watch the movie. So again, please go watch Soul this weekend <laughs> and view it from an adult lens. But no one will ever be you. And that truly is your superpower. In my opinion, it's because we're shifting priorities and identity. Time puts us into perspective and passion is going to what is is what's going to keep us going. So as I mentioned, we're here to talk about soft skills versus hard skills. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do this job in the pandemic if it wasn't for the soft skills. And I think that maybe even prior to the pandemic or before, I, I think there's a lot of taboo around employers hiring someone based off their soft skills, because it's not something that you're always putting in ready, right? It's not I am an influencer. I am a leader. We're saying I can do this or I can make this Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and I think that to be a product manager, you need to have both. And I'm here to break down that barrier that you don't just need to have one and the other, but to go from good to great, you need a combination of both hard and soft skills. And again, to level set, hard skills are the business basics. Um, they're learned usually. So like presentation skills, product road mapping, strategy, even just writing technical specs or APIs. And then soft skills would be your interpersonal skills, the voice, what makes you you, like who makes you you today. And uh, technical skills are important for developing and designing the product, while the soft skills are crucial for leading the team across that finish line and through that product life cycle. So truly being that quarterback. 
So the first one that I uh, want to talk about here today is how to influence without authority. So product managers require a diverse set of skills for their role, as you can see through my last few few slides, whether that's the design, the technical, the communication, the analytical. Um, this skill, I think, is pretty underrated, and it's, it's a unique challenge for us as product managers because we don't manage the people who we directly are responsible for or executing on the product for. So our, at Disney, at least, our design team reports up their design chain. The engineers report up the engineer team. You are not the boss of your designers, of your uh, engineers, of your copywriters. They all have their own kind of segment that they go up until, but you are owning the product. So on paper, they don't report to you. Um, and I think that not managing any of these people who are directly responsible for you becomes a challenge, right? So it's a good organizational design because it ensures kind of the separation, but it leads product managers to needing to influence others without the direct authority. Uh, I think the question is, so how do you do that? The biggest thing here is kind of helping your cross-functional teams understand the why. As a product manager, I'm always saying why. And I'm begging you, if you are a product manager today, ask questions and use your voice. If something, if someone wants you to do something like change the homepage of your website, well, why are we doing that? Or if a business partner comes to you and says, can we change the color of that font? Well, why are we changing the color of that font? I think speaking up and asking those questions, uh, sometimes in life, you know, we make impulsive personal decisions without actually understanding why we made them. And as a product manager, uh, you learn asking questions can save you a lot of time and energy and money in the end. And who doesn't love to save time and energy? Uh, another example is as a product manager, you're in charge of the roadmap or constantly prioritizing the backlog and shifting priorities across the team. So instead of telling your team to do something, I always kind of provide that story and the why behind my ass. So in that way, it develops a sense and trust and transparency and understanding between your cross-functional teams. And at the end of the day, would you rather hear, I need this done and no explanation or can we work to get this done together because it's breaking iOS for 75% of guests and it's impacting an X number of revenue? Um, and can we talk about it, right? So you're having that conversation and defining that and investing in your relationships with your team takes you to that next point of collaborating and compromising. So as I mentioned in the many hats of product management, there will be times when your team disagrees. We're human. We're going to disagree, right? And there's nothing more important, I think, in my opinion, than hearing all sides, right? Because at the end of the day, your work is the product's vision, the why we're doing it. If you're both defining the why and collaborating and compromising, you'll understand how to get your team to that touchdown, right? Like how as a quarterback, you can bring your team across that that touchdown. And remember, you're, you're not convincing. You're not trying to convince them otherwise. You're trying to influence and you're a leader in that working towards everyone's success. Lastly, I believe you can't do the first two unless you do your homework. So when you're presenting your why or the product vision, just don't do it without being prepared, right? This may be just me, but I think that people can read through someone who knows what they're talking about and is credible versus someone who's there to argue or simply be right on something. So find the analytics to back up the decisions you, you need to make. Uh, find your data to tell the story and don't always expect everyone to agree with you. Know that everyone is different and that's okay. And the way you influence one partner may not work for the next partner in your next meeting. And that's the art of product management and communication. You're, you're really learning to speak the different lingos across the different teams and earning their respect throughout the process. The next one, uh, here we got Lumineer again. So passion is contagious and you really, again, personally, I don't think you can influence without authority without being able to tell a good story. So that's gonna help your leadership, your team, your business par partners make decisions and come to agreements. For example, if you're pitching a value proposition for the next iteration of the self-service experience that you want to bring for guests, walk your audience through that experience. Don't just tell them that you want to now have contactless payment. Why do we want to have contact 
contactless payment and how and what and where and when. I feel like those are all basic things that we kind of learned growing up as how to tell a story and craft that beginning, middle and end of the presentation. So you can wrap it up in a row afterwards. And remember, letting someone else's candle is not going to put yours out. So I think sometimes we get so tunnel vision to focus on what we're focusing on and only worry about ourselves, but find passion in the products that you are creating. And the reality is, I get it. I wish everyone lived, worked, and breathed their dream job or passion, but that's not realistic. We have bills to pay, families to feed, and sometimes you take a job simply because it's a job. But if it's a product manager job, know that you are the voice of your product. And you want to find little things that make your candle light up and that you can share with your team. The same way that I'm hoping my energy in this conversation is overflowing for you guys today so that maybe it kind of, you know, I take my candle and I put it next to yours and you're able to spark yours up again. So whether it's food and beverage at Disney, HR, healthcare, I encourage you to find something that you have a shared passion with across your team. And in all honesty, maybe it's not your product and that's okay in that moment, but you're passionate about finding a process and making the team more agile or improving your relationship. There's something somewhere in the time and space that you can find yourself to be passionate about and to share that across everyone. Um, not all projects and features are glamorous. I, I get it. <laughs> I mean, you can't always pick and choose the projects that you're working on. But at the end of the day, at Disney, at least, we're creating magic for our guests. And it's for the guests at the end of the day. And I'm constantly finding ways to do product testing in the park or learning the ins and outs of what guests are experiencing and then acting on that to, you know, drive and tell the story through that data. It's really how do you reframe the mindset? So whatever role you're in today as a product manager, products you support, I encourage you to really take a step back from the work that you're doing not be so tunnel vision and see the product from the lens of the consumer or the client. And it's, it's going to help you build that empathy for your user, which we'll talk about more on the next slide. So lastly, I just want to give a shout out. I have worked with some of the most creative, motivational product managers at Disney. Uh, and I believe that they truly have hard and soft skills and are able to rapidly change with the scope of work that is thrown at us. Um, to be honest, as a product manager, the change that you can handle is off the charts. And I think that's actually what's making me more of an introvert today is because the moment my laptop shuts down, I'm finding ways to kind of conserve, conserve and recharge that battery. So again, we're going on a year of a global pandemic. Let's give ourselves some grace. But with a product manager comes risks and stress, and that is the reality. So we are constantly changing with the products. And because of that, I think sometimes we forget to be our authentic selves because we're constantly molding, as I mentioned earlier, into the products and the needs of the team. So if there's one thing the product has taught me out of all of this is to be true to you. We're all human, we have emotions, and the world sometimes is on fire. But here at Disney, we're providing magic for our guests. And that's pretty cool. So don't lose sight of the vision of your organization. And if you feel like you don't know your company's morales or values, ask, provide that conversation, have that conversation with them to have that ultimate team goal that you're working towards. And the same way that you have empathy for your product, make sure to have some empathy for yourself. So time and time again, the last thing is I've seen ignorance kind of get in the own way of building the best thing or that next project. So Whenever I want to humble myself and feel empathy for my guests, uh, the product, I, I get in front of the product, right? Or we do some sort of user testing to understand what people are feeling and how they're navigating. Because sometimes, again, when you ha only have eyes on the product now, you only see what you see. So you never know what you're going to miss, whether if another guest gets in front of it and they're missing the navigation or they thought something wasn't as clear as something that you see as clear because you're using it every day. That's always a painful realization at first, right? But it's a learning experience. So you getting in front of your product and hearing about other people getting in, your, in front of your product are two very important things as well. And I love this quote, but when you embrace empathy, you can let go of the ignorance that often impedes from learning about someone else. So I wanted to also take a moment and touch on imposter syndrome because it is very real, um, especially if you are new in a product management or just starting to get into the field. You have a lot of power. You are making decisions, you're taking ownership of products, and you're responsible for those outcomes. So don't forget you were hired and you're on that team for a reason. So you are unique. 
you'll find your voice and you'll be able to kind of carry that throughout your time on whatever projects you are working on. So to wrap things up, uh, don't be afraid to take off the mask. Only if it's safely to do so, figuratively. Bring your true self to work and embrace that voice that is completely yours, right? There are times that it may shake and there are times it might crack, uh, but the more you practice, the easier it'll become. And really through that passion, the being your authentic self and how to influence, I think you'll realize all of the changes that can make a difference in who you are and who you show up to work for each day. So I'm hoping that this conversation kind of lit some spark in you guys. And if you have any questions, thank you so much for tuning in today. Feel free to find me on LinkedIn if there's anything you want to follow up on or anything you would love to have a conversation about, um, networking, whatever it may be. I am open to have those conversations. So this right here, just linkedin.com, dev-ward. Um, you never know what opportunities are around the corner. So be safe. Have a great rest of the week. Make sure to watch some Disney movies this weekend and take care. Thanks so much.